everyone, and welcome to The Propcast. My name is Louisa Dickens, co-founder of Ella Mulry and board director of the UKPA, and I shall be your weekly host. Each week for 30 minutes, we'll be connecting the VCs, prop tech startups, and real estate professionals globally, and assist in bridging that famous communication gap we all love talking about. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the PropCast. On today's show, we will be looking at how artificial intelligence is transforming portfolio management and delivering greater insights for corporate occupiers. And we're joined by Richard Belgrave, Vice President at Leviton, an MRI software company, and Kevin Moffat, Director in the Savills Research Team. So thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Likewise, uh, happy to be here. Now, guys, Richard started his career in corporate finance, where he worked on a wide range of strategic projects and performed analysis for FTSE 350 clients. His strong interest in technology later drove him to join Leviton, now MRI Software. MRI Software is a leading provider of innovative real estate software applications and hosted solutions. MRI's comprehensive and flexible technology platform, coupled with an open and connected ecosystem, meets the unique needs of real estate businesses from property level management and accounting to investment modeling and analytics to the global commercial and residential markets. Now, Richard's role within MRI, he works together with customers and partners to revolutionize how individuals work with data and documents with the help of AI. Now, Rich has a sound understanding of AI, including machine and deep learning technologies, and its potential to change the way we sell, manage, and transact in real estate. He also holds a degree in economics from Warwick University. And Rich, I'm looking forward to hearing from you later on in the podcast. Now for Kevin's introduction. Kevin is a director in the Savills Research Team, where he heads up research capability into industrial and logistics markets. Now, those who don't know who Savills are, which I'd be so surprised if you haven't, Savills PLC is one of the leading real estate advisors in the world of over. Got it something like 600 offices and nearly 40,000 people globally. Kevin's role, he, he coordinates market data collection across the UK and the periodical Big Show briefing reports. He specializes in topic and trend-based research by applying real-life issues to logistics and industrial property. Kevin regularly presents at industry events and has appeared at the Estates Gazette European Distribution Summit, the Retail Week Supply Chain Summit, and... So many, many more. And he's also a member of such societies like Industrial Agent Society, IPF, and the list, the list goes on. But like I said, thank you both for, um, both for coming on the show. I think let, let's just start from the beginning. And Rich would love if you could tell us a little bit more, you know, how did the relationship first start between Savills and Leviton? Okay, yes. Yeah, so, well, I was hired almost five years ago now to run the UK business. And to be perfectly honest, I had no idea what I was doing. Day one, I was sat in a WeWork, no employees, no real knowledge of the real estate space or technology, especially as it relates to AI and machine learning. Mm-hmm. I just thought the business was, was fantastic. And I, I, you know, from, from, from my prior background, I had seen how a lot of large enterprises were making use of, of innovative technologies and, and I guess just wanted a piece of it. So I kind of, I sort of trotted around the, the standard industry conventions and actually one of the first ones I attended, I met the, it was at the time the, the global head of Occupier for Savills. We just got talking very informally, told him about my new role. He invited me in to, to see the product and I guess the rest is history. Now that's not to say you know, they brought and, and signed a contract on day one, but I think it was the first time that, you know, Savills had, you know, seen how this kind of, you know, the, this mythical beast that is AI was actually, you know, a- adding value within the space. Our technology is geared towards helping our clients find, analyze, interrogate data buried within sort of verbose, complicated contracts. And obviously, if you look at some of the challenges that Savills customers have, a lot of them are relating to the complexities of leases, the data within. So there was a, a, you know, a, a very nice fit from the beginning. And over the course of the next you know, three, six, nine months, you know, we built the relationship. And actually that turned into a, you know, a commercial relationship not, not long after. Awesome. Well, it seems like a fairly sort of quick sort of time frame to what I've heard with um, other businesses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess, Kevin, um, 
on your side, like whilst, you know, Richard just mentioned, you know, the importance of sort of data, I guess in relation specifically to industrial and logistics sector, which is obviously your, your niche and a pretty massive and growing niche, you know, what were the data questions that needed answering, you know, and how, I guess, how have you gone about answering them? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, I became aware of Savile's partnership with Leverton, I don't know, two, two and a bit years ago. We'd done a lot of work in the offices sector to start with and, you know, looking at improving our, our data collection and analysis and, and, and outputs. Logistics and industrial has always been, you know, a fundamentally under-researched area of the property market. You know, I've, I've been you know, on the research side for, you know, approaching 15 years now. And, you know, frankly, when I first started my, my career, you know, nobody, nobody wanted to talk to me because, you know, warehouses weren't sexy. And, you know, that has changed dramatically, particularly over the last five years. You know, the role of e-commerce, the, the demand for warehouse space has, uh, has, has increased dramatically. And, and combined with that, the, 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 the capital you know, looking to invest in, in logistics warehouses across the world has increased as well. And, you know, investors are just becoming much more mature in, in, in their data analysis. Now, that's not to say we didn't have good data before, but there were gaps. So working with the, you know, the data insight team at, at Savills, you know, we realized quite quickly that we could we could do something very, very clever, you know, to to improve the the transparency within the industrial and, and logistics sector. So that's what we've we've started the process of doing. And, you know, it's not been without its challenges along the way. But, you know, we are now seeing the benefit from that both both internally, but also externally in in you know in the advice that we can give to our our uh, investor, developer, and occupier clients. Well, I guess if we're looking specifically at, I guess, PropTech, um, how do various aspects of PropTech assist in that sort of process? Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's two, you know, two main ways that this helps. You know, one, one is purely a, you know, a visualization and time issue, you know, the ability to you know, to quickly interrogate things, you know, things that would have taken days beforehand, you know, can now take minutes. And so that's you know a very you know clear example of um, of, of something. So that, you know, there's a time gain and, a, and, a, and an efficiency gain. But the you know the other thing as well is just having this treasure trove of of, of data. You know, so for for me on the research side. You know, actually, I'm more interested in in the raw data and how we can pull it out and, and analyze it and find trends. And you know, the, the, the I mentioned that you know, logistics and industrial was you know was an under researched area. So that means you know you don't you, you didn't really have time series of data, time series of information. You know, and our work with Leverton has helped us you know supplement the data that we already had and create these time series. And you know, that's not to say that you know the the past is a a, a clear guide for what the future holds, but it certainly does help us inform, you know, our thoughts on how property markets are going to, pl- you know, play out and 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 what the trends are going to be. Yeah, and I guess Rich, sort of Kevin mentioned, obviously there's been moves on, and I guess in the office, in the Savile's office, you know, and now and obviously logistics and the industrial sector. You know, how was it? You know. How's it been working, Savills? You know, one of the largest and oldest real estate businesses globally. You know, have you sort of seen this sort of increasing sort of adoption? And because obviously, as your product gets known, your product improves. Surely, people start to recognise the, I guess, the power of it. How have you found it? Yeah, again, that's a really good question. And, and I'm not just saying this because Kevin's on the line as well. <laughs> uh, but actually, you know, at, at the similar time that I was building the relationship with Savills, I, I was also with you know with peers and, and competitors of theirs. And one thing, you know, sort of struck a chord, which is just how innovative they are as, as thinkers. So it was never really much of a challenge getting people to buy into the, the, the concepts and premise of, you know, we, we must be using artificial intelligence to streamline this process, improve this process. I, I guess the, the challenge has always been, how do you go from department to department, asset class to asset class? Mm. How do you break down 
the conventional barriers that, 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 that are there no matter what you're trying to sell, which is, you know, budgets, you know, concern on long-term value, you know, et cetera. But yeah, and they, they, they have been barriers f- for us and we are no, by no means, you know, fully mobilized and penetrated across the global Savills organization. However, you know, as I, as I always say to my team, you know, if the attitude isn't there, then you're never going to be able to sell into these guys, right? You're never going to be able to partner up with them and work with them. And I think that, you know, that isn't an issue uh, in this relationship. So, you know, I hope over the course of the next, you know, months, years, et cetera, we, we continue to grow together and the adoption in, in improves and increases. And have you, I guess it's all about the attitude, not only from Leverton MRI side, it's also about attitude of the real estate people. Have you seen um, COVID sort of pushing forward adoption and changing attitudes? Mm. Everyone <laughs> says it's happening. I just like, I've yeah. heard like differing opinions, but like it can't, attitudes can't straight change just over one pandemic in my, in my opinion, but like it can help. Yeah. Look, it, it, in a weird way, you know, I think if, if I, if I look back at March and I, and you know, chatting to my team and you know, the exec team at MRI, I think there was a lot of concern that people are just going to pause spending, right? Pause adoption, uh, focus on the new norm, the new world and kind of, and, and forget about actually the technologies and the vendors available to them to actually, in theory, make their lives easier. It didn't really take long for us to actually find some real momentum during the pandemic. And I do think that when you look at, you know, you know we're a cloud native platform, you know, we, we have a clear return on investment, which we can often demonstrate through, you know, a 30, 60 day pilot. And I That's think, great. you know, with those things, people are, you know, become really interested. It's not just okay, sink six figures into this product and hope for the best, right? We, we've actually developed the process where we can identify and find value, bring that to the, for, you know, to, the, to the forefront of the conversation. And then from there, look to kind of, you know, build, you know, build, build on a particular relationship, department, whatever it might be. So yeah, in, in a very sort of contrarian, what's, what was expected you know, in that manner, you know, the pandemic, you know, actually has helped us somewhat. I think it's just, it's, it's given people time to reflect on, you know, operating models, you know, top-down strategy, use of, you know, products like ours. And yeah, I, I think we're really benefiting. And, and that, that's not to say that, you know, at the end of the year, perhaps we, we might kind of, you know, suffer somewhat as, as, you know, there's, there's a further correction and, you know, the furlough scheme ends and, and, you know, companies actually, they make big sort of structural shifts in their workforce and where their workforce are. But yeah, on balance, I think we feel relatively optimistic about you know what what the what the pandemic has uh, has, has has brought us from a from a business perspective. Obviously, uh, you know, outside of that, it's it's been a complete you know disaster. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we 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 de- we've definitely seen you know you know attitudes uh, change in our favour. Yeah, some businesses I've spoken to, there's been like I guess some clients are asking for the products to be changed slightly. They're looking for a slightly different things. I guess if we're looking specifically at your product, is a certain, I guess, success story of it or part of the product which you're most sort of proud of or which you see most demand for? Yeah, I think that, so, you know, kind of to kind of what, what Kevin was talking about, which is, you know, his role is, you know, his focus is really on improving the availability and transparency of information, which can make a difference as it relates to decision making. Mm. And I think that, you know, when, when you think about AI and, and, and our products in particular, you know, I always position the value proposition in two strands. You've got process optimization and you've got presentation and output, or, you know, presentation and output. And, and what I mean by that is the, the way that we structure data, put it in the hands of our clients and help them make decisions which are business impactful. Uh, and, you know, we've had some actually interesting, you know, sort of, sort of, I, I can't, say too much because some of it's non-public, but <laughs> we've had some interesting case studies with Savills in particular, where some of their clients have come to them and said, okay, we, we need to rationalize our portfolio right now, right? As in, you know, we've got 800 mm-hmm. stores, we need to consolidate them into 500 and we need the best locations. And, and that, that really is, if you think about the crux of that problem, the, 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 it, it's really all about data, right? It's all about what am I spending here? What can I earn there? You know, where, you know, is it more efficient to be in this site versus that site? You know, yeah. what are the competitors doing? What does the research say? Uh, and actually, we've done a lot of projects like that, both with Savills and outside of the Savills relationship, where it's really about helping people make 
decisions quicker to adapt as a result of the pandemic. And that's, you know, that's, that's pleasing, right? Because, you know, this is a tough and challenging time for everyone. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's as you know, it kind of, it, you know, gives me a lot of satisfaction when I leave the office or leave my home office, <laughs> I need two meter walk to the kitchen. <laughs> And, you know, I think actually, you know, I really helped someone today. I really helped someone kind of make a, a you know, a, a, a decision which they otherwise would have struggled to make. So I guess we're seeing more of a collaboration between, I guess, obviously machines, technology and sort of people. Kevin, yeah. I guess if, you know, from, from your point of view, you know, what has, what has really been this business impact of working with Leverton? Are there any examples of best practice or, you know, some really good adoption you've seen? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you know, there's, there's, there's two ways to, to, well, probably three ways to, to look at this, you know, there's, there's informing own internal decisions. There's, you know, what we put out publicly and then there's the, you know, bespoke analysis that we can do for, for our, our clients. On the internal side, you know, we are, we're using the data to help our business development you know, targeting potential instructions or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, to, to improve, you know, our, our business and, and, and profitability and, and so on. And, you know, that, that's, that's fantastic because, you know, the data that we're, that was unstructured before is now structured and, you know, and that, that, as I said before, that, that creates efficiencies, you know, just in terms of the way we work internally externally you know we can you know i mentioned that you know we now have this you know this treasure trove of data and you know that goes into you know much more kind of thought led analysis that that helps inform the investment decisions that our our clients are making and then you know the the last piece really you know comes down to well you know what do we what do we do publicly you know because part of part of the research function you know, in, in any kind of property agency business is to, you know, produce content that gets people talking. So that third bit is, you know, a, a work in progress, really, because how can we, how can we use the data that we now have, you know, to, to get people talking about what's going on? And you made the point about, you know, COVID, you know, and we, you know, there's a lot of noise at the moment, I think, you know, in the press and the, the, the property press about, you know, what the future holds and, you know, has this changed people's attitudes to, you know, to, to, to work, where they work, how they work, you know, and what are the, what, what are the unintended, unintended consequences of that? What does it mean for, you know, retail, leisure? What does it mean for logistics? You know, where are mm. people getting, getting stuff delivered? So the more data we have in a structured fashion will allow us to answer those, those big questions that are, you know, troubling everyone at the moment. Yeah, well, I guess that sort of answers my sort of next question, Kevin. You know, what does the sort of future hold for data visibility analysis? You know, it's pretty difficult to predict anything at the moment. Yeah, and I think, you know, the only thing I will say is that the, you know, our, 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 our clients, you know, big global investors, big global developers, you know, are just data hungry. You know, the, the decisions that they make are data driven. And so the, 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 the transparency is, you know, is something to aspire to, you know, we're, we're very lucky in the UK, you know, in terms of our, the, you know, the transparent market, you know, nature of the markets, uh, you know, you could say the same is true in, in the States, you know, in Europe, in continental Europe, you know, l- you know, less so. So I think that's a, a huge area of opportunity for, for Savile's, and and the prop tech industry as a whole, because actually, you know, certain markets in Europe are 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 not very transparent at all. You know, data is hard to come by. One of my colleagues in in, in Eastern Europe on the research side within Savills, famously, she described to me, you know, the 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 quality of the data available. She she described as lunch based data, and you know what she meant by that was you know that this the, you know the data comes to be because people meet up for lunch and you know share what's going on and, and then it's, you know, uh, transcribed in Excel afterwards. So I think there's, you know, there's a huge geographical challenge to all of this as well. And, you know, the best practice that we have in, in certain markets is not necessarily transferable to other markets. 
And, you know, that's going to be a massive challenge. Yeah, I guess that sort of rich, you know, MRI, you know, global business. What's, you know, what's your opinion on transparency of data? Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in, incredibly, in, incredibly important. When I joined Leverton, I came from a finance background. And I, I mean, I'm sure the, the, the listeners are, are quite familiar with you know, tools and platforms such as Bloomberg. And if you actually look at the history of the genesis of Bloomberg, actually it came about because you know, one guy, one business decided that the way that data is presented in terms of financial analysis of companies is so disparate and varied and inaccessible and untrustworthy that mm. you need something to kind of bring everything to life. Uh, light. So actually retail investors can actually make sensible decisions based on tr- data they can trust, data they can see, data they can interrogate. And I think now we take things like Bloomberg for, for granted, but actually really struck a chord with me when I, when I entered this space and started asking questions like, okay, so you've got a thousand, you know, to, to, to an occupier, to a landlord, you know, you've got a thousand leases, you know, what's your average, uh, you know, late payment fee percentage? What's your average, you know, tenant um, in, improvement obligation? And, you know, I, I was amazed at how many, you know, respondees couldn't actually come back and, and uh, you know, with, with a sensible answer. And it purely just because of the lack of transparency, availability of, of data, both on a micro level and a macro level. So I, you know, I think for, for decision-making, I think for running your business, for staying ahead of the competition, and just you know, for, for, you know, for, for doing what's right you know, by, your, by your investors, by your, by your senior stakeholders, you, you need data, right? You need to be able to access it. You need to be able to trust it. And, you know, thematically, I think the real estate you know, industry is, is making a lot of progress, but you know, probably still, still a long way to go, uh, I would say. Yeah, definitely. And I guess looking at sort of future insights, you know, what, what sort of rich, but there's a big old question, you know, what, what's, next mm-hmm. for AI, what's next for AI? You know, what, what do you think is next for the product? For our product, so, so right now the focus has really been on helping people turn, you know, and, and Kevin mentioned sort of, you know, structured versus unstructured data. If you look at the real estate industry, it's pretty much underpinned by a vast quantity of unstructured data right now. Okay. So, that, you know, and, and what I mean by that is, is contracts, you know, li- legally binding documents, et cetera. You know, a, a landlord, their net operating income is, is pretty much determined by what it says in the lease. Uh, and a lot of that data is very unstructured unless you use AI to structure it, make sense of it, be able to compare it, you know, you, et cetera. I think that, that's been a predominant focus of ours. And I think that's where we're really making a name for ourselves. But actually, the, the, the models that we deploy to process these contracts and turn unstructured content into structured data, you know, they, they can also be used to, to help drive really meaningful analysis and actually from that analysis recommendations right so before you even you know are thinking about what to do have the data drive a recommendation and suggestion for you and that's going to be a real focus of ours over over the coming years so you know we, we work with our customers to you know i guess phase one you get all their data into one place make it structured make it accessible trustworthy but with that data set actually start looking at trends, outliers, et cetera, and help them make decisions before they're even aware that a decision needs to be made. So that, that's kind of, you know, in what we're doing and, you know, really exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. But, but you know, in general, I think, you know, AI is evolving, you know, immensely. I was chatting to our CTO the other day, who was actually one of the founders of, of Leverton and still, you know, sits within the MRI organization, uh, helps us from a research capacity and he you know, he's saying that the models now available that you deploy for machine learning purposes are five times more sophisticated than you know when he, even i joined the company and he's seeing a lot of development and evolution in sort of the, the sort of com- conversational ai <laughs> which <laughs> you know, we all know you know we, we all kind of sit on you know phones to our banks you know kind of with this automated you know responses etc and i think that's really frustrating right now and I think he, you know, by his reckoning in two to three years time, I think, you know, a lot of the conversations we're having, maybe even with, you know, a tenant rep, you know, with our, you know, with our brokers, et cetera, they could all be automated based on how much data these new machine learning models can, can sort of plug away at and drive, you know, you know, drive sort of, you know, conversational AI models going forward. So there's some, some super fascinating stuff, you know, coming both, you know, within our, you know, our world, but also within the realm of AI itself. 
I guess talking about sort of obviously automation, now both for you and feel free to say your opinion on it. There's a big debate over, you know, whether AI is going to be taking jobs or, you know, mm. it'll automate a lot of jobs, but I think it will create jobs. Obviously, I'm a recruiter, I'm permanently recruiting people, and that's my job from account management customer success. I do think this will create jobs, but they're going to be different sort of jobs and people need to upskill that sort of what I'm saying, you know, Rich or, you know, Kevin, what are your opinions on this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kevin, maybe I'll just answer quickly. So I, I think that there is a tendency, and I, I don't know why, to sort of condemn ourselves to this sort of Terminator I robot style thinking <laughs> that, we are, that we are victims of technological advances, right? Well, we don't need to be. I, I completely agree with you that, you know, I've seen jobs created and repurposed around technology, both in this industry and, you know, sort of my, my, my previous line of work. And I, and I think that, you know, you need people with the right attitudes willing to embrace and work with technology. And, and, and that in itself, you know, puts you in a very strong position. I think anyone who has the attitude of, okay, this, 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 you know, this is going to take my job, you, then you know what, maybe there is a threat, right? And there is a risk. But that's not to say that that individual doesn't have an opportunity to upskill, learn, you know, learn how to work with technology to, you know, improve their own, you know, value to an organization. And, and then, and then, you know, you almost kind of build a barrier, you know, you know, a barrier around yourself because, you know, you, you've, you've kind of put your hand up and you know, you're willing to adapt and, and move with the times as opposed to, as I say, sort of just condemn yourself to, to the fact that, you know, your, your, your job is obsolete or, or going to be obsolete. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that, Rich. Just to interject, I mean, I think it's, it's a very interesting debate and discussion, you know, about where, where this goes. And, you know, I mean, it's, it, from my perspective, and you could argue I would say this, but, you know, data is one thing, but the interpretation of data and the you know, the recommendations of that is, is another. And, you know, I think, I think it's, you know, it's going to be this evolution of the role, you know, from, from broker agent to advisor, you know, because people, people still need to understand, you know, data, data will give you some answers, but, you know, are you asking the right questions? And, you know, all of this type of stuff, you know, and, and real estate is a, you know, a slow moving asset class. And what I mean by that is, you know, not in terms of its adoption as, of technology, but in terms of, you know, the fact that what you're dealing with is, is tangible, you know, it's a, a physical thing, you know, and there's, there's lots of external factors, you know, just in, in, in my world you know, warehousing, you know, you can be dealing with, with planning authorities, you can be dealing with, you know, environmental issues, you can be dealing with transport issues, you can be dealing with, you know, a whole myriad of different things, you know, and, and, and often, you know, the land that we're de- dealing with is, is owned by, you know, a, a, a farmer, you know, um, and the land's been in their, genera- in their family for generations, you know, and the way the way they transact is is different to the way you know global multinational investors transact. So, you know, it, there's lots of nuances to it, and you know, the evolution of it. I think we should, you know, we would do well to remember that, you know, not all real estate works in the same way. So, I think that's a, a, you know just a point I'd like to make. Rich, have you got anything else you'd like to add? No, no, I, I think, yeah, I, th- I think Kevin's right. You know, it's, it's very easy just to kind of have this sort of blanket approach to this is the way it's going to be. I think you know, some jurisdictions will be, will, will move slower. Some, you know, even within real estate, some asset classes, you know, perhaps will, will evolve, will, will, will evolve quicker than others, which, you know, which, which, yeah, which, which I guess, you know, changes the kind of the, the workforce dynamic and the, the way that people are deployed to do certain jobs and tasks. And I, I mean, I, I, I maintain that I think that, you know, anyone who sat there thinking that technology is a threat, you have an opportunity to, to, to nip that in, in the bud and, and do something about it. But, you know, what I will say is that, you know, your companies will perhaps be, as you say, replacing roles with, as Kevin points out, roles that look 
a, a more of a value you know, creation to clients and, and, and stakeholders for in an advisory and consulting capacity, as opposed to a, you know, sort of doing a, you know, re- repetitive mundane, you know, just you know, document collection, data aggregation tasks. So, and, and I think that, you know, just staying ahead of those trends and, 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 and what's coming, you know, there's so much recent, I mean, like, you know, I was just a couple of weeks ago reading a, a report that, uh, you know, Accenture put out on, on artificial intelligence, you know, even just kind of, staying plugged into how some of that research is compiled and the themes and the conclusions, I think, you know, it gives anyone enough opportunity to just, yes, like I say, stay ahead of the, the curve and not, you know, sort of, you know, risk over time being crowded out of, of the workforce because there is going to be opportunity for anyone. It's just, you know, it just, it takes a bit of uh, ingenuity to figure out, you know, where you can still fit into the equation. Yeah, agreed. I think a big thing here, as long as we're doing a little bit of adoption and, and as long as we're moving in the right direction, like you said, everyone move a different yeah. a different pace. But as long as we are all innovating and adopting, that should hopefully mean good things. Sadly, this is bringing us to the end of the show. Before we go, is there any bit of information you'd like to share with our audience and also the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, please, please connect with me uh, through through LinkedIn. I don't have a quirky name like Kevin, unfortunately, just Richard Belgrave. But please do reach out if you want to know more about the, the kind of what, what we're doing at, at MRI or just you know, pick my brain on some of the wins and losses that, that we've experienced. There was something I'd like to say, actually. Yeah, so, so something which I experience day in, day out is because, you know, AI is, is branded, you know, shiny and new, you know, people seem to forget the core principles of how to allocate money and resources mm-hmm. in the same way that they would buying a traditional piece of software, right? Or even as an individual investing money in, in, in the stock market. And I think, you know, my, my parting advice would be, you know, do not forget that irrespective of what vendor you're looking at, what kind of technology it represents, you know, always think about evaluation of the strategic fit. So how does the product align to your overall goals of the company? You know, how do you determine value contribution of that product? You know, so make sure you're piloting, make sure you're thinking about how the results of the pilot translate into short-term, long-term value. And again, you know, please, please, please assess the feasibility with which your organization can actually adopt this technology. So often, I speak to friends who are running other companies or, or even from my own experiences. So often, you know, I, I see, you know, sort of projects and relationships go sour because the client wasn't ready. They didn't have the right people. They didn't have the right knowledge. You know, they didn't have the right data available to even kind of start processing through, you know, you know a, a platform like ours. And I think so those, those three components, you know, don't lose sight of them. And I think if you, if you keep track of them and, 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 and stay true to them when you're pr- appraising, artificial intelligence vendors or, or any other technology, you know, you, you, you will go a lot further than those that don't. Well, and Kevin, you know, is there any bit of information you'd like to leave the audience? Yeah. So just uh, two things, you know, you can contact me on, on Twitter or LinkedIn, LinkedIn, just, just my name on Twitter. I'm, I'm Kev the shed. So if you want anything about warehousing, you know, that's the, uh, the place to come and just, you know, a, a bit of information just from, from our experience. You know, we've, through our work with, with, with Leverton and the, the UK logistics market, you know, we've looked at data for about, it's not even a fifth of the market, really. You know, the total market is, you know, close to, close to 3 billion square feet of property in the UK. And, and so far, we've, you know, we've just dipped our toe. So, you know, there's, there's a huge amount to go at here. And as I say, you know, as the, as the sector matures, you know, the data needs are, are going to grow exponentially. Well, well, look, thank you both for coming on the PropCast. Um, it was a pleasure having you on the show and I'm looking forward to catching up with you after the show. Thanks, Louisa. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us this week on the PropCast and a big thanks to our special guests. Make sure you visit our website, www.nmre.co.uk, where you can subscribe to our show, or you'll find us on iTunes and Spotify where all good content is found. Whilst you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate if you could rate and review us on iTunes, or if you simply just spread the word. Be sure to tune in next Tuesday, and I'll catch you later. You're listening to a podcast company podcast. 
This was made by Podcast Syndicator, where we help you go from start to grow to making money with your podcast. Let us help you share your message and your voice with the world. Reach out now, Jason at PodcastSyndicator.com or Brett at PodcastSyndicator.com to find out more. Thank you for listening and do come back to hear nothing but the best podcasts.